it's kind of looking at all of the systems together as an ecosystem and saying, if there's one little piece that's out, well, that's going to affect the rest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Food Matters podcast, your home for nutrition, health, and wellness education. My name is Laurentine. I am a filmmaker and a nutritionist and the founder of foodmatters.com, and I'm here to hold your hand on this journey to optimum health, transformation, and emotional healing. Hello, 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 Food Matters community, family. And welcome to another epic episode of the Food Matters podcast. I am so honored to be joined today by Dr. Valerie Frank. And she's all the way over in Canada at the moment. I am in Vanuatu. So she's a natural therapist and she is an inspirational and world renowned naturopathic doctor and teacher. And she is one of those teachers that also loves to speak out about this topic of holistic healing. So she travels the world and is a a keynote speaker and has options all over the world from Australia to Asia and the Pacific even to be a remarkable influencer in natural health, natural medicine, and even helping coaching world-class volleyball teams <laughs> in being the best they can be and staying on their toes, literally. So welcome, Dr. Val. Can I just call you Dr. Val? Is that fun? Yeah, you can. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. And, uh, and you know, we've got some mutual connections and um, who speak very, very highly of you. So I'm just uh, so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, so you, um, you have a clinic or you have a medical, um, would you call it a practice? Like, is that what we call it? Medical practice? Yeah, a natural in, um, practice. Yeah. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about um, what you're currently doing in, in Canada and how you're touching people's lives. Well, I think, you know, if it's, if it's okay with you, it's, it's kind of, it's been a journey. So, you know, I'm working right now, as you said, with a lot of elite athletes, a lot of high performers, uh, people who are uh, CEOs who live that, what I call a high performance lifestyle. So go, go, go. But I work a lot with what I call MEOs. So they're the moms that are like the executive officer of everything. And so they have to be always on the go. They have to be performing, performing, performing. And so I help people in terms of really reversing aging, that what we call aging, because we're all aging so fast. Mm -hmm. And I help them to live that high performance lifestyle without having to compromise their health. But when you ask Mm -hmm. kind of what I do, it, it kind of starts off from how I got into naturopathic medicine, because I had this undergraduate degree in nutrition. I was studying nutrition at a, a wonderful school and very much feeling like, wow, this is something that I want to work with for the rest of my life and, and learning so much and loved the education. And then what happened is I got sick and I went to my medical doctor. My medical doctor did every test underneath the sun. And what ended up happening was she couldn't help me. She said, everything is normal. Go home. Or she said, go, go and sleep some more. And I'm like, I'm sleeping 10 to 12 hours. I'm in bed for an hour. And then I'm, uh, I'm up for an hour after I sleep 10, 12 hours. And then I'm exhausted and I can't live like this. So I'm like, there's got to be a way that I can still live the life that I want to live. And I call that, or a friend of mine pointed out, he's like, you're red line living. You're always like pushing the red line. I like being busy. I like being active. I like being on the go. And, you know, so I want to live that lifestyle. And what I realized, I went to see a naturopath at that point in time because my medical doctor, as lovely as she was, she didn't have any answers for me. And my naturopath said, it's your food. And I was like, well, it can't be. I'm a nutritionist. I know everything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And as you've experienced, Yeah, the education from a medical nutritional perspective 
it just does not talk about food quality and the, the micronutrients and the soil and the organisms and, you know, all of that, how much life is in your food and then, you know, the food sensitivities. So I said, okay, I have nothing else to lose. And we did some food sensitivity testing. Uh, yeah, it turns out I was allergic to life. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I, I can have water, I can breathe, and that's about it. <laughs> and so, but as soon as I had someone help me with that transition, and I took out the foods that I, I, my system was reacting to, and then I refueled my body with living foods, my health turned around like that. And then I could Whoa. live the life. Okay, that hang I on a minute. Let's. So what you're saying is you were, so you were a med, you were a nutritionist and you were a naturopathic doctor and then you got sick and oh, you I was a, actually I was a, got sick. I wasn't a, a naturopath at that time. I was, I was in a, I was in a nutritional science program at the university of Guelph for all of you Canadians who know how amazing that university is. I love that university. Okay. Okay. So you were a nutritional student at the time. And you yeah. got terribly sick, so sick that it was like probably something like chronic fatigue, so sick you couldn't actually get out of bed. And your energy levels yeah. were so low and there was nothing really your doctors could do for you. And so you decided to, to do an allergy test and you realized that yeah. you were pretty much allergic to everything under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> and Life. once you started cutting out foods, you healed, you got better. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Can yep. we imagine, it, can we just know, imagine how many people are dealing with this right now? Like they are sick. Their doctor doesn't know what to do. They're on a host of different types of medications, usually pharmaceutical medications, and still they're not getting better. They're still energetically drained. They're still low. And so everything else in their life looks low and it's a vicious cycle. It goes from, from feeling unhappy and unhealthy then, you know, perhaps like it re relates to your relationships, it relates to your job satisfaction, and we get depressed. And, and it goes think, into that terrible spiral. Yeah. And we think, oh, we're just getting old. We're meant to have low energy. We're meant to have gray hair. We're meant to wrinkle. I'm just, I'm meant to, ha you know, gain weight and have aches and pains. No, you're not. No, 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 no. Exactly. So what did you end up doing? Tell the story. So, well, I, I saw my naturopath and I just changed the foods. And my, my health turned around like that. I took out the foods that I was reacting to and I started eating foods that were comparable, that were really tasty, but that brought nutrition and value into my life. And then we started working with, you know, some other things we found, like my hormones were a little bit out of balance. So we, we started working with that. And I was floored because, you know, we're taught that when your hormones are out of balance as a female, we're taught that those PMS symptoms are, are normal. And that's, that's common, but it's not normal. It's not how we're meant to live. So we got rid of that. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to live with that. And so then I was just at this level of health where suddenly, you know, people are looking at me and they're like, you know, what are you doing? Your skin is glowing. You look 10 years younger. And I'm like, I didn't do anything except for eat real food and foods that my body liked that energized my body. And then suddenly I'm, I'm leaning out and they're like, what are you doing to lose weight? I'm like, I haven't counted a single calorie. I haven't changed how I'm working out. I just shed inflammation. So, you know, then I got on this whole um, aspect of life where I was like, I, I love performing. So I love, you know, just really being able to have a life of passion and purpose and energy. And I don't ever want to compromise. So I, first of all, I said to my naturopath, okay, you have secret knowledge. I want to know what you know, because I love my medical doctor. She's amazing at what she does. The medical community has great answers for when you need that type of medicine. And, you know, it's this is not an either or. It's not one or the other. You need both. So, but I recognize that what I was taught, there was a whole gap in that medical nutrition, in that knowledge. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, you guys have the secret knowledge. So then I went and became a naturopath. And then I went on my journey of saying, okay, now I'm going to go and travel all over the world and study all of these different forms of medicine, these ancient forms mm -hmm. like yoga, 
uh, I went and studied at a teaching hospital in China. Um, I went and I immersed myself in that culture and learned about not just acupuncture and the herbs, but food and nutrition from those perspectives. Uh, I went and studied uh, with a healer in Hawaii. And so I spent all of this different time. And I, I also went and, and learned about hypnosis and learned about the, the whole mind, body, spirit connection from, from that perspective. And I started looking at all these different forms of ancient wisdom and ancient medicine and just immersed myself in that for, for years, just learning, 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 learning. And then, of course, bringing that knowledge to my patients so I had that experience. So I've been in practice now for, yeah, I've been practiced this year. It's going to be 23 years. So at this point in time, so I got to a certain point where I said, okay, now I've, I've done a lot of studies. I have a lot of knowledge. Now I want to turn around and I want to teach this. So I taught at the naturopathic college. I taught at the Canadian school of natural nutrition. I supervised. And so I really wanted to bring back to the naturopathic community and the, and the nutritional community, a lot of, of my learning and a lot of my passion. And then I hit another transition point where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm training the trainers. I'm training the naturopaths. I'm training the holistic nutritionists, but there's this whole body of knowledge. There's like this, there's billions of people on this planet that I actually really want to kind of take the information that I have and, and give that to them. And so now that's kind of where that passion to really stand up and say, okay, I see what's going on. And you need to know about this. It's it's now the secret knowledge. I was teaching the secret knowledge to my my naturopathic students and my holistic nutrition students so they could teach it to you. Now I'm like, no, everybody's got to know this. Wow, girl, thank you. Thank you for standing up for this message wow. because that's really what it is. That's really what it is for me as well. And this is why I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to showcase more the work of naturopathic doctors because there's still so many of my clients, my colleagues, my friends, my family that will still typically go to their GP for any type of nutritional problems, deficient problems, deficiency problems, diseases of lifestyle, acne, psoriasis, and they will start with their GP, right? And then they will start with there. Perhaps they will get a script, they'll go to the pharmacy, and they'll start with whatever it is, rubbing on a cream or taking some type of pharmaceutical medication. And only after they tried a lot of these types of drugs, they will go and try a natural alternative. Because, I mean, even if I say, well, why don't you go see a, natu a naturopath or a natural therapist, they'll say, well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm still going to believe my doctor first over. And it's like, really? Do we still really have this, like, we're on the fence about naturopaths and naturopathic doctors? And it's like, okay, well, for, for those of you guys that are listening and you have seen your medical doctor, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you're doing. I love medical doctors and they have a massive importance in our, in our community. However, I feel that there's so many things that we can do with our naturopathic doctor to address our diet and lifestyle first as our option, our first option rather than our second alternative option to address these type of issues, metabolic issues, health and hormone issues, gut issues, bloating, indigestion, um, psoriasis, um, acne, any type of skin issues, I would say go and see a naturopath first. So can you tell us what happens in, no, first of all, what is a, the definition of a, of a naturopathic doctor and a naturopathic medicine field? <laughs> Let's go back to basics. I'm so glad you asked because there's a lot of people don't know the difference and they're like, well, what's the difference between a herbalist and a naturopath and a homeopath? Oh my, like there's, what are you guys doing? And so naturopaths, um, here in Canada and in, in North America, um, we are trained healthcare professionals. So very similar to a chiropractor or a medical doctor um, or um, an osteopath in the U.S., we have to study basic science at university and then 
the naturopathic college is a four-year postgraduate degree. So again, very similar to chiropractors or, or general practitioner medical doctors, we do four years uh, at a licensed and accredited medical college. So here in Canada, I went to the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, which is in Toronto. Four years of study. The first two years, we're doing the anatomy labs and the basic sciences and learning how to read blood work and ultrasounds. And, and we're learning about pharmacology, just again, the same way that, you know, a, a general practitioner, medical doctor would learn. And we do the clinical rounds and we do um, in our second and or sorry, in our third and fourth year, we have to have so many uh, I, uh hours in terms of being supervised and, you know, being in, in that treatment setting under someone else's license. So we get all of that training. We have a, a licensing body. Um, very similar, again, to medical doctors. We do get uh, here in, in Canada and, and in Toronto and um, in Ontario, you can write a prescription license. So we can prescribe things like um, different types of hormone replacement therapy or, or thyroid medication if needed. Uh, we can do intravenous vitamins and minerals. So it's, you know, it's a medical program, but we learn about nutrition through the whole four years that we're there. So medical doctors, they get at best half a semester of, of nutritional training. So as great as they are, we, they get a lot of pharmaceutical training. So at, they're fantastic for pharmaceutical training. Great. Uh, nutritional training, that's not their scope of practice. And I think, you know, when you kind of take a look at, okay, half a semester at best versus four years, you can kind of say, okay, the naturopaths are going to be the expert in that area. So as much as naturopaths get to prescribe minor prescriptions for major prescriptions, we don't really learn about that. So the medical doctor is going to be the better choice for that type of medicine, which is, which is great, but we support each other. So naturopaths also learn acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine, traditional Asian medicines. We learn about herbs and vitamins and foods and, um, and acupuncture from that perspective. We do learn about homeopathy, which is using small amounts of a substance to help in terms of healing the body on an energetic and cellular level. We learn a little bit of things like hydrotherapy. We learn a little bit of some body techniques. Um, but again, Again, you know, really, we're medically trained practitioners that focus on a, a great deal of our time and our treatment using uh, natural therapies to help in terms of healing the body and supporting health and healing. So the great thing about naturopathic doctors and what differs them in Canada from a herbalist is we have that medical training so we can order different types of blood work, but we're also trained in the medication. So we know how, what we're going to do and what we're going to advise is going to interact potentially with medications that you, you may be on from your medical doctor. So it's a little bit different from that perspective and we're kind of a little bit broad spectrum. And again, I loved having that uh, training in uh, traditional Asian medicine so that when I uh, wanted to expand that, I could just go to China and immerse myself in their teaching hospital and, and learn so, so much. And there's so much of value that you can learn from that, um, not just a herbal perspective and an acupuncture perspective, but from that food perspective. Uh, everybody in China has, when I was there, they all had their own home remedy for everything. It was fantastic. Yes, that's so good. Well, thank you for that definition. And it really shows that, you know, you can do blood work, you can do any type of allergy testing and hormonal testing. So you guys have such robust information and knowledge and wisdom at your fingertips. And one of the also one of the, the my my favorite definition is when I was studying nutrition and natural medicine about um, my favorite definition was that the naturopathic community, they look for the causes of the illness. They go down and to the cause. They don't go down to the source yeah. of why this illness has created, been created in the body, right? So even something like cancer, it's a long-term diet and lifestyle commitment to creating cancer in your body and even diabetes and but then there's also a source there's also a cause right there's so i yeah. love the naturopathic field because it really addresses the the cause and helps to eliminate the actual cause rather than just eliminate the symptoms and so often what we want we want a pill for every ill we'll we'll be treating the symptoms whereas we're forgetting to actually look at the cause right so that is what i love personally about nutrition and naturopathy 
And with respect to naturopaths, we're not just looking at, do you have a disease? Yes or no. We're actually looking at, okay, yeah, we want to know, do you have a disease? But just because you don't have a disease doesn't mean you're optimized. And so I have a lot of patients that come in and they're like, I've been to my medical doctor, all of my tests are normal, but I don't feel right. And I know something's off. And I'm like, perfect. You're in the exact right spot. Because just because you're in a normal range from a medical perspective doesn't mean you're in an optimal range for where you're going to feel best cellularly. And so we also, as naturopaths, want you to be the doctor. You're the doctor, not us, right? Healing is Mm -hmm. between you and source. It has nothing to do with the naturopath sitting in front of you, right? So it's really important that people get that education, that they know how their body is speaking to them, and then they know how their body wants to be cared and nurtured. Wow. That's so beautiful. So if you can just sum up a little bit more about the allopathic medicine approach and naturopathic medicine approach to healing. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like looking at a car. When the when an allopath, a, a medical doctor looks at your body, they're looking at, are you broken? And they're looking at you as a, a machine, a car. And they're saying, okay, well, what's happening underneath the hood? What's happening for the tires? What's happening for this system? When a naturopath looks at your body, a naturopath is looking at your body like an ecosystem. One system flows into the next, flows into the next, flows into the next, flows into the next. So when you go to see your medical doctor, your medical doctor is going to say, oh, you have knee pain? Let's look at the knee pain. Oh, it's not related to the headaches. It's not related to your digestion. It's not related to the constipation. It's not related to your food. It's just joint pain. And oh, you're getting old. <laughs> or maybe, hey, let's take an x-ray. It might be arthritis. That's that's it. From a medical perspective, again, very systematic. And one symptom isn't necessarily contributing to other areas of the body. But with naturopaths, we're like, okay, wait a minute. If you've got joint pain, did you know that it actually might be coming from your gut? Or, hey, it might be this level of inflammation and the headaches that you're having might be actually coming from the same source. So let's look at the whole thing. And what's happening with your hormones? Did you know that can affect joint pain and that can affect your bowels? And are you having bloating? So it's kind of looking at all of the systems together as an ecosystem and saying, if there's one little piece that's out, well, that's going to affect the rest. And just because, again, something is common doesn't mean it's normal. So aging, common, not normal. We, we're all aging way too fast. Or society is aging us way too fast. I'm mean, not we are all because we <laughs> know better. But a lot of people, again, just there, there's a difference between being sick and being optimal. And just because you're not sick doesn't mean you're optimal. So we can take that look on a cellular level and say, even if you're healthy, even though you're you're considered healthy from a medical perspective, doesn't mean you're ideal. And let's optimize that range for, for performance and longevity, because we should all have the capacity to be, you know, windsurfing or hiking at 90 if that's what we want to be doing. So when you're in your 50s, right. you're your 70s. Yeah, you shouldn't have this lack of energy. You should still be able to do all the things and feel as good as you did in your 20s and 30s. I love that. It's so true. And um, and yes, let's all pray that we all get to, you know, still be hiking and surfing and skiing when we're 70, 80. That's the best. <laughs> So um, I hear it as well from a lot of my patients and clients, uh, sleep and stress. I mean, it's literally everywhere. We're all dealing with our society has created so much, you know, I guess the advent of (laughs) emails and Facebook and messages left, right and center. There's so much stress to get back to people, to be on top of our game, to be a mother as well as a business career woman, to be a father as well as, you know, the income provider for your family. And so I get it. I totally understand. You know, we're not sleeping well. We're having trouble even staying asleep and we're stressing out way too much because we're bombarded with information. So how, if in regards to, um, I mean, those that are listening and there's like, those are the ones that are still seeing their GPs and going to their GPs first, what particular type of illness medicine or ailments or even just health conditions would you say would typically benefit from going to see a naturopathic doctor first? 
Well, I think there's a lot, but I, I love what you're talking about in terms of stress. Be- and, and I want to re- reframe it. Everybody's stressed. Everybody's busy. You're right. The problem isn't necessarily that we want to be superhuman. The problem is we don't know how to fuel our body properly. And the problem is, is that we're really not getting the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that will allow us to live that lifestyle anymore. We used to. And so if we actually start to take a look at, because this is, again, my favorite people. I, I say people who want to be like that dad that's performing or that mom that's performing. I want to get up in the morning and I want to be with my kids. I want to spend that quality time and I want to drop them off at school. And then I want to be power broker when I'm at work. And then I want to come home and I want to have my quality time with them. And I don't want to compromise. I get those people. I I am those people. I don't want to compromise. I want to have that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And why should we compromise? So don't let people tell you, oh, no, you can't be superwoman. Yes, you can. You just have to fuel your body. See, I call that high performance living. So if you want to redline it, you can. I want you to be fueled. I want you to be passionate. But what we need to make sure that you're doing is you need a deep dive, a a total assessment to find out what's happening cellularly, hormonally. How is this high performance living affecting your life? What are the nutrients that you're missing as a result of that, as a result of that lifestyle? What is your DNA telling you where your strengths are and your weaknesses are? Are you more prone to accelerated aging or not? What's happening with, you know, all of those levels in the body of your antioxidants? Let's actually look at those performance factors. Then let's design a protocol that's based on your body's biochemistry, cellular needs, and your DNA. You do that and everybody becomes superhuman. So for those people who are actually looking for that, um, I have like a fireside chat that I do with people where I actually go through a bit of an assessment and kind of says, let's just do a little body scan and let's see. And then kind of talk Mm -hmm. about like, what is that optimum life that you want to be living? And why aren't you? Because we all should be doing that. And so that should just be baseline. We have... um, clinics here that are called MedCan. And um, they're medical clinics that do like CT scans and ultrasounds and MRIs and ECG. They just like take people and they do every single scan possible. And then they give you an assessment of like, this is where your cholesterol is. This is what's happening to your health. They give you a total assessment. And then if there's something medically wrong, they'll they'll refer you to someone. If there's not, they'll, they'll just send you on your way and say, or maybe there's things where you can tweak and change, but they'll send you on your way. And I'm like, okay, let's take that. That's good. And let's actually go deeper and really analyze your DNA, your cellular health. Like, let's take a deep dive into what's happening on all levels. And then let's actually give you tools so that you can maximize that performance. You do that Mm -hmm. and you just get this vibrancy of health and life and no compromise. No compromise. And then, yeah, what would you see, you know, naturopathic uh, doctor for medical doctor? I think, you know, to be honest, you should have a healthcare team and you should have them both on your healthcare team. And you should have someone who's a body worker. You should have a massage therapist. You should have a chiropractor or an osteopath, just depending on, you know, what your, your preference is. You should have all of those on your healthcare team and you should be seeing them for assessments. You should trust them and then you should listen to them. And so with respect to, you know, naturopaths, when I was in school, we said, you know, the things that we do best are the three P's, poops, periods, and pain. (laughs) So (laughs) anything to do with hormones, anything to do with digestive issues, fertility issues, anything to do with skin, but there's so much more that we can do. So I would say like build your healthcare team that's solid, that can work together and just start building that foundation of health. But autoimmune conditions, you know, we work really well with those too. So there's, there's so many things that you can do. Okay. So that's interesting to hear. So autoimmune conditions too, you're saying, okay, oh, absolutely, bring it on. We can handle that. Right. So what sort of autoimmune conditions are we talking about? And like, even going back to the story of what you were diagnosed with, what would that have been called back in the day? Was that chronic fatigue or what were you diagnosed with at the time? I was diagnosed, my medical diagno- uh, doctor diagnosed me with stress. Because um, back in the day when I was graduating, uh, you know, from, from my undergraduate, chronic fatigue wasn't a thing. 
So I'm kind of aging myself a little bit, which I don't really care that much about So, because I'm all about anti-aging. So now if you're figuring out chronic fatigue didn't exist when you were this old, how old are you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. So, <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. you're being diagnosed with stress is also interesting. It's like, you know, I thought they would usually come up with an interesting illness and it's like, oh yeah, that's a really rare one. And we have to go through all sorts of tests with you again. And no, none of that. No, no. She did every test she could. She tested my thyroid. She did a ton of blood work. She did ultrasounds. She did CT scans. She did bone density scans. She did x-rays. She was like, I got nothing. She's like, everything, clean bill of health. Everything's showing up fine. <laughs> You're good. Wow. So she's like, eh, this is wow. just stress. <laughs> you know? That's why she said, go sleep some more. Now, looking yes. back at my blood work, what I found was really interesting because I, I got the the um, blood work later on because I wanted to see once I had started to go down the the light, the path of light, the rabbit hole. <laughs> when I was like, oh, I love this stuff. I want to know what you guys know. I looked back and I was like, wait a minute, my white blood cell count was slightly low. I'm like, huh. And you never told me about that. You just said, no, you're normal. And then I looked as well. I'm like the thyroid function, it's in a medically normal range, but now I know the naturopathic range. And I'm like, well, that wasn't ideal either. So I'm like, oh, okay. So it, I didn't have a medical disease. She was right. She did a great job, but I wasn't optimal either. And I'm like, okay, this is borderline. That's a little bit low, but you just said, nope, it's normal. So as a caution to a lot of people who are out there, um, it, she's absolutely correct. She she did her job. The Canadian Medical Association would be like, nope, you're right on. You're absolutely spot on. Great, brilliant, no problem. But this is where the difference between not having a disease and feeling optimal is different. Right. So this is where naturopaths are kind of trained to take that deeper dive and say, okay, you're normal. Good. Great that you don't have a, a disease, but that, but again, now let's see where are you going to perform best? Where are you going to feel best? And I actually was speaking with a patient today who had just subclinically low thyroid function and actually mm -hmm. male and very unusual for a male. And we were looking at his blood work and we had looked at it on a, on a regular basis before. And we looked at it more recently. And I went, Hey, wait a minute, your thyroid just did a, a big jump in terms of its number. And I'm like, you know, you're just, you're sitting borderline. Did your medical doctor flag this? And he said, well, no, he didn't say it at all. And his cholesterol levels were high as well. And I was like, okay, well, if your thyroid function is low, cholesterol levels can come up. This could be like, before you go on any statin medications, why don't we ask your medical doctor and, and see if he's willing to kind of prescribe a little bit of a, a natural thyroid hormone. If not, I can do that. That's not a big deal, but I like to work together as a team. So just let's have a conversation and, and bring him in and see how he feels. And his medical doctor kind of looked at it and said, okay, I see where you're coming from. Um, sounds logical. Let's actually do, instead of like a, a med medication, uh, let's do a natural, what we call a desiccated thyroid hormone. And we did that. And then we measured the thyroid, the cholesterol, uh, about a month later. Thyroid levels are now looking fantastic. Cholesterol levels dropped. They're in the best range that they've ever been for him. And at the same time, he was saying to me, you know, I didn't notice that I had brain fog before, but now I'm, I don't have it. And now I don't have any joint pain. And now my energy's up and I'm leaning out. And, you know, and he's like, I didn't notice that I was feeling bad before, but now that I've got this tweaked and fine tuned, now I get it. Now I see it. And he's like, my resilience is up too. He's like, you know, before he's like, I would be at work and an issue would come up with, you know, certain coworkers and I could go from zero to 60. And he's like, now the same issues come up and I'm kind of chill about it. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, let's kind of talk about this. And maybe there's this going on. He's like, I didn't, I didn't notice. Wow. So when you're not feeling wow. optimal, it's yeah. The optimization is so critical. Oh, I love that. I love that you're able to help people in such, you know, these are critical things and our mood and our stress levels and our anger levels. These are all very important, difficult ways that we can help with ourselves, like in, in daily life, right? Let's talk about um, health tips and tricks for, you know, day-to-day -day 
um, I would say they're not necessarily conditions, but they're more just ailments or conditions like that of lifestyle. I mean, even just something as simple as hair loss. Um, what is your, I mean, I hear it all the time. My hair is falling out. I don't feel like I'm getting enough sleep and you know, it's probably got to do with stress, but what, what, what do you say for hair loss? Well, I think that, you know, the first thing is that you hit it spot on when you said naturopaths are always like, let's find the root. Because why are you losing hair? Okay, you're under stress. Well, is your thyroid an issue? Because if your thyroid's not optimal, you'll get hair loss. If you're um, low in iron or B12, if you're not eating enough protein, you'll get hair loss. If you're low in certain vitamins and minerals, and which you and I both know, like the, ma- the, the nutrients, especially those tiny little micro minerals that basically no one's heard of, they're not in the soil anymore. If that's low, you're going to get hair loss. If your adrenals, you're right, if you're under stress and you have high cortisol and your adrenal function is crashing and the hormones go off balance, you're going to get hair loss. If you don't have enough stomach acid, if you're not breaking down your food, you can get hair loss. So it's kind of like, okay, well, what is the actual real root cause? And let's kind of figure that out. But you and I were kind of sharing a little trick earlier. And one of my favorite things right now is honestly a Jamaican black castor oil. That stuff is fantastic. And it works really well if you have psoriasis on your scalp or eczema on your scalp as well. So there's regular castor oil, which you may have used as a castor oil pack externally, or you may have heard, oh, I can take the, a little shot of this for constipation, or if I'm you know, um, about to give birth and go into labor and it's delayed and you know, I can swallow some castor oil and it'll bring on labor. I, I don't recommend that because again, the labor is super intense. I don't recommend it for constipation because again, the cramping is intense <laughs> and it can be toxic in high levels. So It's not something that I really recommend, but castor oil and Jamaican black castor oil are different. So when you look at castor oil, it's going to be um, very clear. It's going to look like uh, a vegetable oil, kind of like that yellowish kind of, you know, translucent sort of look to it. And again, very good topically to help in terms of drawing out impurities if you do a castor oil pack. But the Jamaican black castor oil, they take the castor bean and they roast it. And it turns this black color and it's like tar. And if you just put that all over your hair, all over your scalp, it's amazing for nourishing the hair, nourishing the roots and brightening up the scalp. So it helps in terms of you of hair growth and hair thickness and softening the hair as well. So you can try that too. Great trick. See, I love that. I love that. Thank you. These are great tips, you know, and very important for a lot of people that are currently dealing with high levels of stress and not sleeping well and having these issues with their hormones. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, What about, um, let's do like an anti-aging one, like skin, fine lines, dry skin, um, sagging underneath. I hear like, I always have bags under my eyes, fine lines along the, the eyelids. What, what, what are your thoughts? Again, you know, after <laughs> once, yeah, once I turned, you know, 50, it really became important to me to talk about that and to, to do that. So I have researched the heck out of everything that I could possibly do to turn back the clock. <laughs> There's no way. Okay, and for those of you guys that are listening to this podcast as an audio, I mean, I dare you guys just put on the video and look at this woman. I mean, look at how beautiful she is. <laughs> She's Thank over you. 50. And she <laughs> looks amazing. <laughs> Thank you. But you know, you get to, you get to 50 and then you kind of go, okay, now I have to get serious about this, my skincare regime. Right. But the truth is, is that you know, the health of your skin comes from the inside out. So whatever you're doing on the inside, you have to start with the inside. So you have to start eating well. Yes, you have to drink pure water. Yes, you have to be getting good quality sleep. You have to be eating real foods for your body. You have to be nourishing your skin from the inside out. So doing regular cleanses, regular detoxes, maybe doing a fast on occasion, all of those are really helpful for the skin. Once you get that dialed in, 
then, and, and you make sure again, you've got the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients coming in for the skin. And we know vitamin C is helpful. Collagen is helpful. Um, if you eat meat products and you're okay with it, bone broth is, is very helpful again for that collagen formation. Um, all of those are really good. What you can also do is make sure you're getting enough of the good antioxidants like your vitamin A. And vitamin A is something that you can do topically as well as internally. So things that I like on internally and topically that I use both ways is I use hyaluronic acid because that is fantastic for joints, for collagen formation, for skin formation, for plumping and hydrating. So again, you can get a good um, collagen powder that has hyaluronic acid in it. You can get hyaluronic acid as a supplement, but you can get it in a liquid form so you can do it topically. Then the other thing that I love using is glutathione. Have you heard of glutathione? Mm -hmm. Very, tell us, very tell powerful. Us what you love about yeah, it. Very powerful antioxidant can be used internally to help reverse the aging process, but it can also be used externally. And when you use both together, they're actually it's a it's a skin whitener. So if you're getting the dark pigmentations, right, those dark spots that are kind of coming up that are, I call accelerated freckles, right? It gets rid of them. So any of those dark pigmentations, yeah, you don't have to have those. So glutathione, fantastic for that. And then topically, my two favorite serums to mix together is actually rosehip oil, which is very high in vitamin A. You'll see it when you get the rosehip oil. It's, it's this beautiful orange color. And then Wait, I love that, sea buckthorn. Yeah. Yeah. So I love mixing the hyaluronic acid, the glutathione, the um, uh, rosehip and the sea buckthorn oil together and using that. And topically. Then topically. And yeah. Beautiful. I love that. I'm pretty yeah. sure that you've got a skincare brand coming out soon <laughs> by the sounds oh, of it. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's talk one more last health tip and trick from Dr. Val. Um, what about for people experiencing GERD and acid reflux, um, feeling that they're over acid and they have stomach issues, um, especially digestive, is digestive issues straight after dinner, nighttime? What do you think? And again, getting to the root cause is absolutely critical. So most people, as you know, they'll think, oh, uh, if I'm having reflux, it must be because my stomach acid levels are too high. And typically it's the opposite. Typically the stomach acid levels are actually too low. And so it's kind of one of those things where that doesn't sound like it should be in intuitive, right? It sounds kind of backwards. So Anything that you can do, like some good, um, I love apple cider vinegar, to help in terms of healing that stomach acid or replacing some of that stomach acid, that's going to be really helpful. But what it also could be as well is it could be that you have food sensitivities. So looking at how you're digesting the food, and quite often the two of them go hand in hand, because if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not breaking down the protein in the food properly. Also, you're not killing off the bacteria that you're, that you're supposed to be killing off in your stomach. So bacteria is coming on the food. You're not killing it off. It's getting into your intestinal tract and causing uh, a disruption in the gut microbiome. And that could lead to what we call intestinal hyperpermeability. Some people call that leaky gut. So you can see a lot of shifts and change happening with food sensitivities just because of that low stomach acid. And then that dysbiosis happens. So you really want to be taking a look at all of those different areas and kind of saying, well, where's the root and how do I, how do I navigate this? There are easy things to do, like drinking some liquid magnesium. I love that stuff. Or one of my favorites, depending on where, you're, um, where you are, is if you can take melatonin before bed. Melatonin has been shown to help in terms of um, acid reflux as well. So there's a lot of things that you can do. There's um, chewable um, deglycerized licorice. So you can chew on that as well. And that it's going to help symptomatically. So there are things that you can do symptomatically, but I would say, hey, let's go and find the root cause. And so that's where I'd always like to work. But love it. Love it. Just 
Sorry, you go. Oh, that's okay. I was going to say, if your reflux started around the time that your hormones started to shift as you approach menopause or after menopause, doing the melatonin has a nice little side benefit. So there were some fantastic studies with melatonin showing that women who were approaching menopause or around menopause or after menopause, if they took melatonin, just a very low dose, three milligrams before bed, it's a very, very low dose, very mild, that actually after one month, they lost one inch from their waist, one inch of weight loss around their, their waist without changing anything just by taking melatonin before bed. So that interesting. Is that is, yeah, yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So those hormones. And there's nothing wrong with taking that. It's, like, it's the hormone, right? But at the same time, like if you take it in small doses like that, it should be totally okay. It's a very low dose. So what I would say for, for most people, it's considered to be safe, but you always want to go and check that with a healthcare provider um, because it can interfere with different medications. Uh, and if someone's bipolar, for example, it can shift them into more of a manic phase. So it's always best that you have a, a naturopath or a medical doctor that you're kind of saying, well, naturopath, I would say, would have a little bit more training on, on the um, nutritional and supplement aspect, how it's going to interfere with the medication, but always talk to all of your healthcare providers and just say, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Is this safe for me? I love that. I love the concept really about creating a team and it's so true, isn't it? It's not just information from one specific area. It's really, it's information from energetics, body work, self care, um, psychology, um, how we are dealing yes. with our emotions as well as nutrition, as well as our GP. So it's a really, I love that concept of building your team. So I think we've learned so much. Um, thank you so much. Actually, let's finish off with one of my favorite questions. Where do you see this integrative healthcare practitioners and holistic naturopathic practitioners? How do you see that in the future? How do you see their role? Are they going to be growing? Are there going to be more of this? Or what sort of, how do you paint the picture for the future? You know, because I've been in practice for 23, 23 years, I've seen a lot of change from when I graduated to now. So I, I have a perspective that kind of, I think I've got a, a really good, uh, solid base on the view of the future and where I've seen things growing. And we're going to see more and more collaboration and more and more integration with all healthcare practitioners. Um, this idea that one person has all the answers it's just, it's not serving our, our communities as we're also seeing more and more interest in um, the medical community as they really branch into different forms of alternative medicine, um, indigenous medicine. Uh, you're going to see this just explosion of, of people coming and working together. The a lot of the advances that we've made with the gut microbiome, you know, things that the naturopathic community has been saying for decades where, you know, decades ago, people were like, you're a whack job for saying that. Now it's commonplace. <laughs> like the gut microbiome. I'm like, we've been saying this for 50 years. Now you guys catch up. Good. Now let's listen to the next, the next phase, right? So I think there's um, a lot more integration. There's a lot more, um, there's a lot more sustainability that we're looking at, environmental protection, indigenous medicines that are all coming uh, together. And I think we're just all going to weave in and, uh, and really start seeing more powerful collaborations. Mm, I love that. I love that. And I personally live in a country called Vanuatu. And I mean, personally, it's been a, a mind blowing experience because I've had to be able to put all of my knowledge that I've learned through the, the years and years of, of teaching and learning to practice here and growing my own food and the gardens and, and using natural medicines and learning from the indigenous ways that have been used throughout you know centuries before even allopathic medicine existed so it's it's true it's really i love that we're adopting all these new and old ways and combining them in a more you know a remix of of, of medicine it's really amazing 
So thank you for sharing. And, and Dr. Val, how can we learn more from you? Is there a, a course that we can do with you? Or is there a, a website that I can direct our Food Matters audience to that can learn more about your secrets? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the best thing would be to uh, have uh, to go to my website, drvalfrank.com. So D R V A L F R A N C.com and book a fireside chat. Uh, what I also have available is uh, I can share with you, I have a QR code that I can share that you can post in the podcast notes that people can scan. Um, and they can just jump right on and book that fireside chat. And I would uh, love to uh, get to know people and just talk to them. I also do have a newsletter that people are, are welcome to sign up for as well. Amazing. Yes. So let's continue to help educate and spread the message of nutrition and natural medicine for all different types of diseases, illnesses, and ailments. Yeah, I guess that's another thing with the Food Matters audience. Um, we have the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program where people can actually study to become a nutrition consultant and, and coach others in their community, family members, uh, friends, and, and like literally seeing this as a supplement form of income. Um, because it's now becoming a lot more well accepted to have a coach, a nutrition coach, a health coach, someone that's there to like cheer you on on the sidelines to keep you hydrated, <laughs> to keep you eating those vegetables, to keep you, you know, falling off your chair when you start binge eating and you're calling them up in the middle of the night going, I couldn't help it, but I bought a whole cake. <laughs> it's like, don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> There's always day three, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, we're on the same page, Dr. Val, and um, hopefully we can meet each other soon and uh, high five over all of this beautiful information that's getting out there in the world. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again for inviting me on. It was lovely speaking with you. You too. Blessings and uh, wishing you an amazing day for the rest of the day. And I hope that our audience was able to get so many great tips from you. And for those that want to find out more about Dr. Val, yes, it's drvalfrank.com is her website. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you again. So, yes, thank you, everyone, for listening. I really enjoyed that talk. I hope you did, too. And there will be more of these on the Food Matters podcast. So head to foodmatters.com and see you again. 